Did you know that beneath Libya's large deserts exists the largest artificial river in the world? Known as the Great Man-Made River Project, the GMMRP lies deep within the desert sands and spans thousands of kilometers. But how and why was this engineering marvel built? Keep watching this video and find out. Why was the GMMRP built? Water is perhaps the world's most common natural resource, as you can find it almost everywhere. However, Libya is one country that does not enjoy that privilege. The country's geography is primarily made of desert sand. To be specific, 90% of Libya's landmass is covered by the Great Sahara Desert. And as if that isn't bad enough, Libya also gets a very little rainfall, especially in the southern areas. In an entire year, Libya gets under 50 millimeters of rainfall on the average, making water a very scarce commodity in the country. Libya's population, heavily situated around the Mediterranean coast, depended on coastal wells and shallow aquifers for potable water. But it was only a matter of time before the aquifers began to suffer from overexploitation. This led to the intrusion of seawater, and as we know, seawater is not suitable for human consumption. Things got worse in the 50s, when the country's water crisis soared to unbearable heights. Libya's increasing population, as well as its economic development, meant that water was needed more than ever. However, the coastal areas, they couldn't suffice, and a solution was needed if the country was going to thrive economically. Luckily, it was around this same time that a breakthrough would come. Several geological surveys were conducted in Libya's desert region, and in one of these surveys, large and ancient underground water sources were discovered. These water sources are known as fossil aquifers, and they were buried deep within the desert sand. The fossil aquifers were part of the Nubian sandstone aquifer system, which is one of the oldest and largest freshwater reserves on the planet. It was a discovery that birthed the idea of building the world's largest artificial river in a bid to solve Libya's long-standing water crisis. Gaddafi's vision and the birth of the GMMRP The GMMRP cannot be discussed without mentioning the name of Libya's former leader, General Muammar Gaddafi. He was a controversial figure in many ways, but his moves were usually bold and overly ambitious. It was this sort of ambition that caused the fallen leader to see an opportunity where most people didn't. For Gaddafi, exploiting the potential of these fossil aquifers was the way out for Libya as far as their water problems were concerned. But besides solving Libya's water crisis, Gaddafi knew that executing such a project would be a thing of national pride as such a massive project would place Libya in any discussion concerning engineering masterpieces. But that's not all, as it would also make him one of the most famous and thoughtful leaders in the country's history. From an economic point of view, Gaddafi also believed that by harnessing the hidden water under the desert, that Libya could become self-sufficient agriculturally. They'd no longer lack food because of droughts, and they would no longer depend on imported food to survive. Gaddafi's plan for the Great Man-Made River Project was to channel water from the southern aquifers to the coastal regions, which were densely populated. This stretch would cover as much as 4,000 kilometers once complete. That being said, the GMMRP project officially kicked off in 1984, and Gaddafi wasted no time in calling it the eighth wonder of the world design of the project. The Great Man-Made River Project was a huge task to complete and required Libya's best minds to make it a reality. It's the largest irrigation project ever attempted, as it's made up of pipes, pumping stations, reservoirs, and wells that cover the entire country. As we already mentioned, the pipeline network stretches for 4,000 kilometers, which makes it one of the longest pipeline systems the world's ever seen. But besides the length of the pipe, they were also very large in width. Each of the pipes used in the GMORP had a diameter of 4 meters, and it allows them to transport huge volumes of water across the desert uninterrupted. This pipeline system also featured wells that are connected directly to the Nubian sandstone aquifer. These wells weren't shallow either, as they were dug as deep as 500 meters, which allowed them to reach into the ancient water trapped beneath the submerged rock formations. More than 1,300 wells have been dug for the sake of this project, amounting to a great deal of water supply across Libya as each of these wells have the capacity to produce millions of cubic meters of water on a daily basis. Phases of the project Upon inception, the GMMRP was split into five phases, with each of them built to transport water to different parts of Libya. The first phase kicked off in 1984 and was ready by 91. This phase required the construction of a pipeline to move the water from Sarir into Zerbo aquifers located in the southeast to Benghazi and Sirte. Amazingly, this single phase involved laying pipelines that stretched as far as 1,600 kilometers. It also involved the construction of several reservoirs where water was being stored before being distributed. 
As for the second phase, it involved extending the pipeline network to the western parts of Libya in order to transport water to Tripoli, which is the country's capital city, as well as its neighboring areas. This phase demanded the addition of an extra 2,500 kilometers of pipelines and the construction of gigantic reservoirs that could store millions of cubic meters of water. For the third and fourth phases, the main focus was on expanding the pipeline network so they could reach the most remote areas of Libya. It was also meant to increase the entire capacity of the system. Unfortunately, this phase was never finished, and this was due to the 2011 civil war that broke out in Libya. After the war, the country remained politically unstable, and these phases have not been finished to this day. But the Libyan civil war wasn't the only problem during the Great Man Main River project, because even during the construction phase, the project had several hurdles to scale. Engineering Challenges and Solutions One of the biggest challenges Libya's underground river network would face was the harsh geographical conditions. As mentioned earlier, 90% of the country is the Sahara Desert, which made things close to unbearable for construction workers. To lay the massive pipelines needed for water supply, big heaps of sand dunes had to be lifted first, and that was no easy task. It required the use of heavy-duty machinery that cost a lot to either rent or purchase. But that's not where the challenges stopped, as the desert heat is scorching, meaning that workers were dehydrated most of the time. Keep in mind that while construction was happening, consumable water was still scarce at the time, making refreshments limited. And even when the pipes were laid beneath the sand, there was still the problem of generating enough force to pump it towards several target destinations. To achieve this, powerful pumps had to be used, and this added to the cost of executing the project. Now, no single pump was capable of getting water to travel across 4,000 kilometers. This meant several pumping stations had to be built at designated intervals en route. These stations had to be strategically positioned to ensure that the water pressure is maintained and that the water doesn't get stagnant inside the pipes. During the course of the project, almost 250 pumping stations were built and fully operational. At this stage of the project, it was crucial that a consistent water pressure was maintained due to the changes in elevation between the desert and coastal areas. There were some areas that needed water to get pumped uphill, and this required more energy than usual. To achieve this, the installation of high-pressure pumps became mandatory, and these pumps were required to push water up to heights of as much as 100 meters and above. And as you would imagine, this took lots of power in terms of electricity. Nonetheless, Libya's existing power grid provided the amount of energy needed to power the high-pressure pumps. Unfortunately, the pumps in remote areas had no access to the power grid, so diesel power generators had to be used to power the pumps. Naturally, this added to the cost of the project, as hundreds of thousands of liters of diesel was used for this purpose. Moving on, another problem Libya's underground river had to deal with was ensuring that the massive pipelines used for the project were durable enough to withstand wear and tear. The pipes were built with pre-stressed concrete cylinders designed to withstand both water pressure and the harsh desert conditions. Corrosion was a real risk to consider, mainly because the water being pumped from the aquifers had high mineral content, which could erode the pipes in the short run. To counter this problem, the pipe's interior had to be reinforced with a special epoxy coating that could withstand corrosion. Also, the pipes had to be buried several meters beneath the surface to protect them from the desert's heat. Just so you have a better picture of how hot it gets in the Sahara Desert, temperatures can go as high as 122 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer, and this is more than enough to damage the pipes. But it wasn't just the inside of the pipes that had to get reinforced, as the concrete used was also reinforced with steel for the sake of extra durability and strength. In some areas, especially where the pipes cross salt flats and other corrosive sections, the engineers were faced with more problems. These sections demanded that advanced corrosion-resistant materials and techniques were used to make sure the pipeline will remain sturdy in the long run. To Libya's credit, though, they were able to meet all the demands and cross all the hurdles to ensure that the underground artificial river project became a reality, and it was a project that the country benefited greatly from. Economic and Social Impact of the Artificial River Besides being a work of engineering genius, the GMMRP had a positive effect on Libya's social and economic landscape. The project's goal was to provide adequate water for agriculture, industry, and domestic use, especially in the coastal area where the bulk of Libyans lived. When Gaddafi envisioned the project, he had hopes of making Libya's agriculture sector one of the most viable in the world. With the creation of a dependable source of fresh water, Gaddafi projected a significant increase in Libya's production of food and a reduction in the importation of it. Before the GMMRP was finished, Libya used to spend millions of dollars annually on food importation. But all that would end after the project was finished. This is because the new water supply paved the way for farmland expansion in the country as a result of better irrigation. The east and west parts of Libya were among the major beneficiaries of this. The GMMRP also led to the transformation of previously barren desert areas into massive food-producing zones. 
Crops like barley, wheat, and a variety of fruits began to grow in these once barren areas, and this didn't just provide more food for Libyans, it also made more jobs for them. In addition to agriculture, the GMMRP provided critical water supplies to Libya's urban centers, particularly Tripoli, Benghazi, and Sirte. These cities had long suffered from water shortages, particularly during the hot summer months when demand for water spiked. With a new water supply, cities were able to meet the needs for their growing populations, and residents enjoyed improved access to clean, potable water. The industrial sector also benefited from the project, particularly in the oil and gas industry, which required large quantities of water for various processes such as refining. By providing a reliable water source, the GMMRP helped support Libya's industrial growth and economic development. It's worth mentioning, though, that the fossil fuels being pumped from the aquifers wasn't infinite. For this reason, some critics argued large-scale agriculture wouldn't be sustainable in the long run. This meant that the water being pumped had to be managed carefully, else it would run dry sooner than planned. But regardless of this fear, the fact still remains that the GMMRP had all-around positive outcomes for the people of Libya, both in terms of consumable water and a boost in the agricultural sector. Surely, even if the water project wasn't going to last forever, it still gave relief to the country at the time they needed it most. Long-Term Concerns while the GMMRP was hailed as a monumental achievement, there were growing concerns about its environmental impact and long-term sustainability. One of the primary criticisms of the project was that it relied on fossil water, which is a non-renewable source. Other than that, there was no major concern about damage being done to the environment during construction, as the pipes ran through barren, sand-filled deserts. That being said, we humbly ask for you to hit the comments below and tell us what you think of the GMMRP. We're committed to releasing two videos every week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more visionary builds.